Hello and welcome to Sunday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic. And on screen, of course, because it's such a hot weather in the UK at the moment, I thought we should do a thermo Sudoku. And so I was looking at the puzzles that have passed our testers, and this puzzle came to my attention. Now this is from Eric Fox, uh, who's appeared on the channel a few times before. And the testing reports on this puzzle are just off the charts. Um, apparently this is a beautiful, beautiful Sudoku. So I can only uh, commend it to you and get you to give it a try before you watch the video. Uh, as usual, to do that, you click the link under the puzzle. Um, now, Eric is a very interesting guy indeed. Not only is he a moderator on our fan Discord server, but he is also the man behind fpuzzles.com. And if you've never looked at fpuzzles.com, I would really recommend that you do. It is a quite incredible tool that you can use to set your own Sudoku puzzles. So if you wanted to actually create a puzzle that looked very like this one, that had thermometers in it, maybe diagonal constraints, you can do that. And it, it's got all sorts of flexibility. You can do chess Sudokus, you can do palindromes, it's a very, very impressive piece of software. So definitely have a look at it. I'll put a link under the video to that as well. Um, now, what are the rules to Eric's puzzle? Well, what we've got is thermometers. I know many of you will be familiar with thermometers in Sudoku, but let me explain how they work for anyone who's new to them. You can see these thermometer shapes in the grid. Well, the bulb end of the thermometer has to contain the lowest digit. And then as you move up towards the UK temperature at the top end, the numbers must increase along the thermometer. So if this was a three, this square would have to be greater than a three. If this was a five, this square has to be greater than a five, etc. Now also you can see we've got two marked diagonals here. So the two main diagonals are also uh, I've also got lines on them, and that is because they also need to contain the digits one to nine. So this is a Sudoku X for those of you uh, who might be familiar with that technology. So we've got thermometers, we've got Sudoku X, and apart from that, nothing else. Um, so do have a go, as I say, click the link under the puzzle to play. And with that, I get to play. Let's get cracking. Um, and do I have any tips for Thermo Sudoku? I do have two or three tips. My best tip is to focus on the longest thermometer, which looks like it's this one, because that will be the most constrained. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Right, this is a seven cell thermometer. So we can instantly say, say that this cell at the bulb end can't be a four, because if we try a four there, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, broken. Can't put a number bigger than nine in the Sudoku, or not, at least not in this Sudoku. So actually, what we can do straight off the bat is restrict each of these cells like that. Well, that actually went in quite nicely. So um, each of these cells has three degrees of freedom. Let's tr maybe try this one as well. This is the, so this is six, six cells. So it's got one more degree of freedom in each particular cell. Uh, so let's fill the options in there and see if we can see anything that looks helpful. And the answer, of course, is that we can't. I was going to say, the other tips I've got for uh, Thermo Sudoku involve the fact that if you've got um, if you've got a thermometer and you're wondering where you can put a one on the thermometer, the one could only ever go at the bulb end. A nine, if you can lock a nine onto a thermometer, it can only go at the top end. Now here, no. there are four positions for ones in row one, three positions for ones in column one, four positions for ones in row nine. Uh, I'm not seeing much, I'm not seeing much else. Let's have a look at this thermometer. So this one, see the problem is as soon as you get into shorter thermometers, the degrees of freedom keep going up. So here we've got a five cell thermometer. So I'm not even sure I want to uh, label all of this. I think I'll label the end the end point. So this first position's got to be one, two, three, four, or five. The end position's got to be five, six, seven, eight, or nine. So you can see this column be quite handy if this square couldn't be a five, wouldn't it? Because at least that would give us a quadruple in this column. So how do we prove that would mean this is not a one? 
Ah, and there you go. This this can't be a one. This can't be a one for exactly the reason we were looking at before, which is where do you where do we now put a one in column one of the grid? If this is a one, we can't put a one here because of normal Sudoku, but the diagonal constraint means I can't put a one in either of the bulb ends of the thermometers in column one either. And once I can't put a one on the bulb, I can't put a one on the thermometer at all. That is beautiful geometry. Look at the way this one interacts on column one. That That is just gorgeous. So we can rule out one from here. And therefore, we can rule out 5 from here, because obviously once this square is a 2, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 would be the minimum for this square. And now we do have a limitation on this column. Now, what can we do with that? And the answer is, I have not got a Scooby-Doo. Um, Oh, bobbins, that's a bit, that's a bit weird as well, because this, this one, the trick with the one is so gorgeous. It looks like this must be intended as a sort of a step in the solve that Eric has created in the puzzle. So that would suggest that limiting this to a six and getting the quadruple in column nine is important. I can't see how though. Um, right, what should we do? We've got the thermometers we've got left are only four cells long, so this is this is hardly any restriction at all. This has got to be one, two, three, four, five, or six. So that square's got to be any number greater than three. So again, look at this. This is getting one, two, and three in this box now have all got to be in those squares. This one's one, two, three, four, five, or six. This one's four, four, five, oops, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Same here, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I can't just copy and paste between these cells, but sometime soon I might be able to do that. We are working on all sorts of things to improve the web interface, and they are very exciting, and hopefully we'll be able to share them with you in the not too distant view. Sure. And now, now, ah, now, yes, I've now got why this is important. That, and it's, it's beautiful again. Look at the geometry. If this square is a six, look at the effect it has on this thermometer. It forces the, the thermometer to be this. And that means that square there, which has to be a one, two, three, four, five, or six, has no permitted value. That is absolutely gorgeous. And look, it's symmetrical. This thermometer and this thermometer work the same way. If I put six here, five, four, three, two, one, this cell would have no value. So all of this means that we can, in fact, remove six from here. So we can remove seven from here, therefore, because if this can't be six, this can't be seven anymore. This can't be six, so the six must go in this cell, which, which are. Ah, now that fixes this thermometer, because now if this is six, five, four, three, two is forced. So we can fix this thermometer, and we can remove all sort, oh, we look at, look at how much this damage this does. We can remove two from the diagonal cells, two from this cell, two from this cell three from this cell, four from both of those cells, four from that cell, five from that cell. Now, now, now we've got a, like a quintuple in box three, look. We've now, because four can't go in either of those squares, four must be in one of, well, it must in fact be in one of those three positions. So this is a one, two, three, four, Oh, this two locks. In fact, I'm just going to tidy up the pencil marking here because it's all getting a bit interesting. There can't be a two in those squares. There can't be a four in this square. And 
Where does where does nine go in row one of the grid? We've not we've not penciled a nine in any of those positions. So nine must be in one of these two cells. Okay. Um, one second. Let me try and two. Two, where does two go in box three? It's got to be in one of those two cells. So two, ah, and two can't be this high up on a thermometer because then that would be a one, that would be a zero. You can, zero can't go into Sudoku. So the two must be in one of those cells, which means two is in one of these cells. Five in box three must be in one of those cells. And therefore in one of those cells. Ah, and not here. Five. Uh, and if this can't be five, therefore this can't be six, and that can't be seven. So, ah, and that's, that's lovely. Look, now we've got an eight, nine pair in row nine of the grid. So this square now can't be an eight, so that's got to be a seven. So, ah, so that's a six. <laughs> That's a five, and that thermometer all but gets completed. We can remove five, six, and seven from this square. We can remove three from this square. Oh, oh, and we can remove just about everything from this square. This square can't be three, four, five, or six, so it can only be one, which means this square is a two. Good grief. The way the geometry interplays on this puzzle is just stunning. So now look, we've got an 8-9 pair into those two cells. This cell can't be a 1. And this cell can't be a 2 because of the 2 here. So where does 2 go in column 1? It's got to go on a thermometer. Well, it can't go on this one because the minimum value of this square is a 3. So if I, I can't go 3, 2 as I go up the thermometer, so the 2 must be here. That doesn't seem to be very useful. Um, this can't be a 2 because of this 2. This can't be a 3. Ah, look, we get more restrictions down here. Goodness, it's hard to keep track of all of the ways in which the sort of various constraints are impacting the puzzle. Um, right, sorry about this. Let me just try and stare at this for a moment or two and spot what, what I'm meant to be seeing next. Eight, nine pair here. So there's got to be an eight and a nine in these th three squares somewhere. Now, one thing that's interesting as well is not only has two got to be on the thermometer, but three, four, five, and six have also got to be on one of these two thermometers because they can't go in the blank square in column one. Ah, you got it, got it. So this is lovely as well. Where does the three go? Where does the three go in column one? Well, the answer is we don't yet know. We know it either goes here, just above the two, or it goes at the very base of this thermometer. It can't go higher than the base of this thermometer because we can't put a one or a two beneath it because there's a one and a two up here. So it is in exactly one of these two yellow squares. Now, why does that matter? Well, that square has to be a one or a three, and there is no way it can be a three because either this is a three, in which case this is not a three, or this is a three, in which case this is not a three. So this is not a three, that's a one. Uh, one can be removed from those cells. One, look, this is lovely. One has to be on this thermometer. If it's on the thermometer, it must be at the bulb end. One, one is very restricted in box five by these three ones because we can remove it from both diagonals and here and it can't go on top of a three so it's got to be in one of those two squares and that's lovely because it gives a one two pair in box eight so this can't be a, this square can't be a one anymore three four 
Oh, there's loads going on in row nine, actually. We've got a three, four, five, six quadruple and a one, two pair, because I've got to put one and two in this row. So one, two pair must be here. This square can't be a six because three, four, five and six must appear in these four cells in some order. So that one has to be seven. It's on the thermometer, so the eight and the nine get placed. The nine and the eight up here get reversed as a result of this nine. Eight must be in one of those two squares. Seven and nine must be in those two squares exactly. Six must be in one of these two squares. And ah, and now now we can use the diagonal because look, in box one the eight is not in those squares. In box nine the, the eight is not on this diagonal. Well, I need to put an eight on this diagonal somewhere, so it must go in one of those two positions. Now, oh, this is absolutely beautiful logic again. Look at the way these eights interplay. They interplay twice. Firstly, with these eights. So eight has got to be, um, well, there's a variety of ways we can look at this. Firstly, we can eliminate eight from these two squares because this forms a sort of X-wing pattern. It's sort of skyscraper-ish. Um, but a simpler way of viewing that would be to say, where do we put an eight in this puzzle in row five of the grid? Where do we put it along here? Well, it can't go in this square. So it must be in one of those three positions because it can't be in any of those squares. So once we know that eight is in one of these three squares, it can't be in either of those two positions. Now, the other thing I notice with the eights though, is that eight is off the diagonal in this box. It's off, the, i.e. this diagonal here the 8 is not on this diagonal. So these three squares don't contain an 8. In this box, these three squares don't contain an 8. So in this box down here, the 8 must be on the diagonal. We know the 8 has to appear in one cell. So it appears in one of these two cells. And look how gorgeous this is. Because now we've got an 8 in one of these two cells in box 1 and an 8 in one of those two squares in box 7. So we can't put any more eights in column two and column three, um, or there will be more than two eights in column two and column three, and that won't work. In a Sudoku, there is exactly one eight in column two and exactly one eight in column three. So between the two columns, there are two eights, not three eights. So in other words, we can't, these can't be eights. The other way of thinking about that is to say, where does the eight go in column one? Well, it's not in those three squares. It's not in those three squares. It can only be here. So we get an eight in the grid. Now the interesting thing about this, well, there are a couple of things I'm noticing here as well. One can't go here, so one must be in one of these cells. But the other thing is, once we know that eight is in the cell that is not on the thermometer in column one, we know nine is on a thermometer in column one, which means nine nine must be here or here so one of those two cells has got to be a nine because once you know nine is on the thermometer it must be at the end of the thermometer so nine must be here now in row five because it can't be here and here so this square is a nine this square is not a nine these two squares have got to be a one seven pair to complete the row so seven doesn't go into either of those squares anymore. Nine, in fact, if we just follow through the logic of this nine and think about this box, nine must be ex in exactly one of those two positions. So nine can't go there either. So this square must be a nine. But looking at
just looking at this box look we've got to put seven and eight into this box as well so seven and eight must live in this two by two square somewhere okay so I might be stuck again now. ah no I'm not stuck again oh this is it's beautiful again with the eights look if eights have to be in one of those two cells and in this two by two then again we've not yet managed to place an eight in column six of the grid it can't be in those three squares it can't be in those three squares so it must be in one of these three squares but we know that if it is in one of those three squares it has to be this one from our pencil marking already so the eight must go there which fixes the eight here well that's remarkably unhelpful I thought that would give us give us more traction uh... Ah, no, it doesn't. One seven here. Nines have got to be in one of these two squares. Oh, so this... This square can't be six anymore. Because if it's six, seven, eight, nine, we'd have to have an eight here. And there's an eight already in the column. So that square is not six. Ah, so looking along row 9 now, where does the 6 go? It shifts over there. So this column is now very constrained. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4. We've not played... So this square and this square is a 5, are a 5, 7 pair. And... Oh... Oh, this is, look at the logic, look at it again, the 7 here, now this is a 5-7 pair because it can't be a 6 anymore, It now and it can't be a 7, it's a 5, but look at the effect of this 5, not only does it give us a 7 here, but it bounces back down into this thermometer by the diagonal, and once 5 gets eliminated from that square, this square has to be a 5 in row 9 again. So now this is just gorgeous. So now we get the 5, 8. That square's got to be a 6 to complete the box. And can we take this further? I'm sure we can somehow. I'm just not quite seeing it. 3, 4 and 5 into those positions. Okay, is that all we've got? Maybe, ah, no, it's not, look. The, we've got a three, four pair on this diagonal now. So in this, ah, so this is a naked single. This has to be, looking at the diagonal exclusively, this square would have to be a six, eight, or a nine, but there's an eight, nine in this box. So that square is a six, which means that square is not a six. Oh, ah, sorry, yeah, but look, this, this square is very restricted anyway. It can't, surely it can't be four or five, because if this is a three, four, five, the minimum this could be was a six. So this square can't be four or five and is nine. Ah, that's probably been sitting there for a while. That fixes the nine and the seven. Seven must live in one of those two cells by Sudoku. This square is not nine anymore. And this square is not five, actually. Um, so three, so five must be in one of those two squares if it's not here. And this square has to be, this square has to be less, less than six. So it could be four so it's three or four is it is that the options I think it is now that's that's interesting look because that gives us a two three pair in this row which means these squares have got to be six and seven one of these two squares is a five this is a three four pair in the column so that's a six
And now we've not placed seven in this column. And seven's definitely a bigger number than a five. So seven must go higher than the five in this column. That gives us the five over there. It locks a seven out of these two squares. This is an eight, nine pair looking at this diagonal again. So we've almost got this tidied up, but not quite. Maybe I've got to look at this diagonal. I've not really paid this diagonal any attention yet. We've got to place, uh, we've got very little restriction, three, four, five, six, and seven. So that square has a few options. It can't be five or six. So it's got to be three, four or seven, I think. Oh no, it can't be three. This square, actually, let's have a look at this column. There's a lot of, yeah, this square's got to be two or three. This square's got to be three or six. It can't be two. This square's got to be two, three or six. We need to put one, two, three into those cells. And this square, uh, that square's got to be one, two, three or four looking at the column, but it can't be one or two looking there. So this square is a three or a four, which matches up with its friend in column eight. So this square is a two. Oh, now I've got a trick. There is a trick. There is a trick. This square. This square. This square is very interesting because look, it sees both of the three four pairs. It sees the three four pair in row nine and the three four pair in column eight. So can this square be a four? Well, the answer is no, because then that square will be a four and that square will be a four because obviously the effect of that because of the diagonal is to fix threes into those two squares. Now you can't have two fours on the same diagonal. So this square's got to be a seven. These two squares have got to be one and four in some order. I don't know what that order is. The seven though fixes this square as a six and that might be important. Maybe, yeah, the seven fixes the seven and the one, the one and the two. Two must live in one of those squares. What a puzzle, eh? What a puzzle this is. And six on this diagonal now helps me with this square. That's got to be a three. And this three is massive. It gets me into these three, four pairs. Um, although not maybe, well, that square's got to be a one just to complete the column, which fixes the one and the two there. That's got to be a two because of this three. So this square must be a six by Sudoku. Where does six go in box seven? It's got to be here. So this square has got to be a three, four. And look, the three, four pair there is resolved by this four. So three, four, three. The four here fixes the four, five using the diagonal constraint. The five here fixes a five there, which forces this to be a two. So we've got one, three, one, four. And in this box, ah, we've got a three. Ah, so that's interesting. This is interesting because now we've got a deadly pattern emerging in the central rows of the grid. That's gonna be what this little thermometer is for. This thermometer is gonna be the way that this deadly pattern gets resolved. I bet you it is. Now, that's a two by Sudoku. So what have we got left? If we come down this column, the seven is forced into this square by Sudoku. And I've not yet placed a four in this box. And the four has to go here, look which makes that a nine. And this, that fixes the nine here, the eight here, this square's an eight, that fixes the eight and the nine. Right, this is, oh, what a finish. Isn't this so elegant? This, this little two cell thermometer, which we might have thought was almost irrelevant, suddenly has become relevant because it disambiguates whether this square is a one or a four. 
it can't obviously now be a 4 because then we wouldn't be increasing as we went along the thermometer. But making this square a 1 fixes the whole of the rest of the puzzle. Look, isn't that a beautiful finish? That is how to solve Eric's puzzle. And Eric, I loved it. Brilliant. Let me know in the comments how you got on. Uh, and I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. And we'll see you later on for another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.